Florida's Cultural Traditions by Jada Bradley. Connecting historian culture to a trip, a trip to Florida can include many sights, sounds, and even tastes. This because Florida is home to people of different cultural backgrounds. To understand why Florida does not have just one culture, you must look at its location and story and history. Much of Florida is surrounded by water. So it is easy to reach Florida using boats. What reasons did people have to set for settling in Florida? Some people came to Florida to explore it. Some were brought to Florida and stayed to make it their home. Others came to Florida seeking a better life. Today, people often move to Florida because of its warm weather. Whatever the reason, each cultural group helps to make Florida an interesting place to live and visit. Early Inhabitants Florida's first inhabitants arrived about 10,000 years ago. They were the ancestors of Native American groups that still live in Florida today. When Spanish explorers arrived during the 15th, they discovered three major Native American groups, the Calusa, the Avalachi, and the Timoco, the Seminole. After the arrival of European explorers, many Native Americans died from disease and from fighting in wars. Those who survived joined to form a new group, the Seminole. The Seminole are a mixture of native of a d different Native American groups. The Seminole also permitted runaway and self people to join them. After the Seminole Wars ended, the surviving Seminole continued their way of life throughout the early 19th. They hid themselves in small camps in the wetlands of South. Florida, they were able to survive by hunting, fishing, and trapping. When more people began to settle in South Florida, a similar thought that their way of life would disappear. In 1934, the government passed the Indian Re Reorganization Act which allow Native Americans to hold elections and form their own governments. In 1938, the United States government set aside 80,000 arts of land for the Seminole to move to. The government hoped that the Seminole would change their way of life from hunting and trapping to farmer instead. The Seminole still did not trust the United States government when it passed the India Re Reorganization Act, so they did not write their own constitution until 1957. Today, the Seminole have a strong economy. They have their own school system and run a hotel and a museum. Some of them live on reservations and others live in society. They keep their culture alive through storytelling, music, and crafts. Some Seminole continue to make dolls, beaded jewelry, woven baskets, and traditional clothes as their ascenders did. At the Seminole Tribal Fair, you can see these crafts and taste traditional salmon foods, such as fried bread, salt key, and swamp cabbage. African Americans African Americans have contributed to Florida history and culture ever since the arrival of Spanish explorers in Florida. During the Second Civil War, Many enslaved people escaped slaveholders and found shelter among the Seminole. When most of the Seminole were forced to move to Indian Territory in Oklahoma and Texas, 
Many African Americans went with them. During the Civil War, many African American troops fought in the Battle of Olesti. During Reconstruction, Jonathan Gibbs served as Florida's first African American Secretary of State in 1868. Living Poor, Living Apart. By the 1880s, African Americans in Florida lived in several neighborhoods from other groups and had their own stories and had their own stores and businesses. The church was often a very important meeting place in these communities. And in, in addition to religious services, political meetings and cultural programs were held in churches. Some of these churches are still standing and you can see them on the Black Heritage Trail. Two important writers. Two important African African American writers from Florida were Zora Neale Hurston and James Weldon Johnson. Their most famous works were published in the 1920s and 1930s. Zora Neale Hurston was an author and anthropologist, or someone who studies human behavior. She wrote about life in Florida's African American towns. James Weldon Johnson was a poet and a lawyer who wrote Lift Every Voice and Sing. African Americans call it the Negro National Anthem because it tells the story of African American life in the United States. Cuba and Florida a shared story. The ties between Cuba and Florida are very old. Both areas were once under the control of Spain and show the influence of the Spanish language and culture. In 1959, after the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro took over Cuba. Many Cubans did not want Castro to rule, so they left for Florida. They settled a part of Miami that is known as Little Havana. Although they started with little, Cuban immigrants built a thriving community there. Cuban culture in Miami Cuban culture is visible in Miami and southern Florida. There are, six, there are signs in Spanish and one can hear Spanish spoken. A man might wear a gua bear, a Cuban style embroidered shirt. Restaurants serve Cuban food such as ropa vieja, a kind of stew, or the Cuban. A sandwich made with different kinds of pork and cheese. Nightclubs play his body. Music such as salsa. Carnival Miami includes a big block party on a street called Cali Ocho. This party is a well-known celebration of Hispanic culture. There is also a Spanish language version of the Miami Herra. Miami is home to many Hispanic recording artists such as Gloria Estefan. Cubans continue to move to Florida in order to escape harsh conditions in Cuba and to have hope for a better life in the United States. Immigrants from other Spanish-speaking countries have joined the Cubans in Miami. Many come from Central America and have their own neighbors too. Little Managua is home to immigrants from Nicaragua. Caribbean immigrant People of African and Ancestry from islands in the Caribbean also call Florida's home. Florida is close to these islands and it has a similar climate. Since 1971, over 10,000 Haitians have immigrated to the United States. Haiti is located east of Cuba and is one third of an island called Hispaniola. 
Mary Hattie and his immigrant to Little Hattie in Miami. Let, little Hattie is also home to other immigrants. Haitians speak a Creole language that makes it part of French and African languages. Little Haiti is decorated like a neighborhood in Haiti and has a Caribbean marketplace. There you can sample traditional dishes from Haiti and Jamaica. People from the Channel Islands, known as the Bahamas, brought diverse culture to Florida when they formed a community in Covenant Road in 1840. Baha Bahamians are descendants of English settlers and free and former enslaved Africans. Some American colonists who were still loyal to England after the American Revolution also settled in the Bahamas. The annual Gumbe festival started in the in the 18th. 80s is a celebration from the Bahamian culture that attracts many visitors. It is the largest celebration of African heritage in the United States. Gumbe is the traditional music of the Bahamas. It is also the name of a particular drum that is used to perform this kind of music. English Scottish and Irish immigrants. Great Britain gained control of Florida from Spain in 1763 and split it into two colonies. Two men from Scotland were asked to govern the colonies. James Grant was appointed governor of East Florida and George Johnston was appointed governor of West Florida. Many settlers from England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales moved to northern Florida. They came from the English colonies to the north, such as Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Farming was the way of life for a great number of these colonists. When slavery was still allowed, the wealthy farmers owned slaves, had servants, and lived comfortable lives. Their plantations resemble other large farms in the south. Other families hunted, raised cattle, and worked the land themselves. Sometimes, these families struggled to survive, they would, but they were proud of their hard work. Greek immigrants Greeks first came to Florida in 1768 and settled near Myrna Beach. When the new Meyer Beach colony fell in 1777, the Greek settlers moved to St. Augustine. Around 1850, many Greeks moved to Florida to gather sponges in the Florida Keys. Sponges are simple for water life, life whose skeletons form soft lumps and are found on seabeds. The Greeks had been sponge diving in the Mediterranean sea for centuries, and they brought new technology to the industry in Florida. In 1905, George Congress brought a diving suit to Florida that made it easier to stay underwater for longer periods of time. Within the next several years, thousands of Greeks spawned fishers settled around Tarpon Strip Springs, even though the demand for sponges fell in the 1940s and 1950s. The Greeks continued to gather sponges. Today, many, vi- many people visit Tarpon Springs for the Greek culture and to watch the divers pull sponges from the seabeds. Outdoor festivals are a large part of cultural life in Florida. Warm weather for most of the year means that more festivals can be held there than the cold than in a colder climate. Florida's cultural girls make pride in their her- heritage and enjoy displaying their art, music, foods, and dances to other Floridians and tourists. Some of these festivals include Florida International Festival, 
Carnival Miami and the Hollywood Jazz Festival. Glossary, Ancestry, Family History, Annual, Yearly, Cultural Group, a group of people who share a way of life, Heritage, the tradition and customs of a cultural group that have been passed down from parents to children.